Hello everyone, welcome to the GCP Sharing Vat Market Research. So I'm from uh, Vietnam, my name is V from Asian Vietnam and I'm the MCB OGD uh, in next term. And one of the fun facts about me is that I can move my ears. Okay, so let's get started. So for the concept today, uh, first I want to share about some crucial thoughts like uh, we should have before designing or jumping into any market research project. Secondly, I want to briefly tell you about our market research project, like what has been done in Vietnam. And uh, thirdly, I will tell you about my main challenges and uh, what, uh, how can I overcome it. And then uh, what can Biobersona can be used for. Okay, so get started. So first, here was my thinking flow when I start this project. So uh, the first thing that you have, you should think is not about like market research, but you should think about your business challenge. Like what are your business challenge that you are having with your product in your country? Think about that first and then think, so will market research can solve the business challenge? Because in the past, I have seen many uh, cases that we are doing market research just for the sake of doing it but not like doing it like in order to solve some real business challenge yeah so think carefully about it and then after that if you clearly define that okay market research, the market research can solve your business challenge then you uh, should think about what will be your objective and what will be the research question what are the questions you want to be solved after doing this research and then what types of research and research method that can help you to answer the research question above and what will the timeline for the project and what will be the task that you will give to the LC and what will be the training and auditing system that you should create to ensure LC can perform the given task in the best quality so here's the example. So far as in Vietnam, uh, we have one of the biggest business challenge with OGE is that we have a really slow market penetration rate two years. And then when I start looking about the past data, I have uh, found out that one of the we having the slow market penetration because we haven't defined the buyer persona and the customer insight clearly, especially for the winter pick. So my first research objective will be to define the winter pick target customer insight uh, towards our internship abroad product. Yeah, and so from then I have my research question is that what are the target customer in winter pick insight? What are their top of my organization when they talk about internship abroad and what are their current insight after COVID-19 and the expected output is that I will have a buyer persona, a value propositioning of the product in Vietnam and uh, their insights. So from then I can draw out my marketing and communication campaign. Okay, so here is the example that you should really, really clear about your business challenge, your objective, your question and your output. Okay. Um, here is the example that I've made in the slide from the LC2C. Okay, and then in the second part, I will move on to the like brief uh, stage that I have done in my market research. So first, I have a desk research to understand the business problem. Okay, to understand business problem. And then when I understand my business problem, I define my objective. I start doing the qualitative research. Qualitative research is the objective is to explore. Yeah, uh, and I uh, I I, I build questionnaire and I like uh, and me and my LC we do in depth interview for the returnee and we uh, analyze the interview output. So after this part, we will come to quantitative validation. Uh, with the validation part, like. After explore the data in the qualitative, we need to validate it in the bigger scale. Yeah, like for example, if you have found an insight that uh, an EP they will they are really interested in internship approach because they want like to have high salary in the future. So then in the quantitative, we will test like how many people in our market share the same thought of having high salary. So here's uh, the quantitative and then lastly we will summarize the insight and uh, do our report to draw out our output. So uh, to be specific, you can just look uh, like just look into uh, my general training here and there, like there are many training I have made for the LC to clearly explain this process. Yeah, you can just uh, take a look at here and you can understand all. Okay.
So in the, the third section, I will share my main challenge when I uh, do this research and what other way I have used to overcome. So first, uh, okay, I will go through one by one. So first, I don't have much expertise in doing market research. So actually, this is my like my second time doing it. My first time is when I was a VP. It is my second time. And even the, and I, I don't even study about this much in university as well. So my solution is that I contact an alumni who is working in Nelson to ask for the consultancy. So uh, for me, this is a really, really important part because as, uh, as I believe, market research is a really hard thing. So, uh, and one of the quotes that I really like is that the blind leads the blind, which means if you are blind, you cannot lead your LC. And then you will give like really, really vague guidance for the LC. And, but it's, it doesn't make sense, you know, it doesn't make sense that we give a vague guidance, but we expect them to produce good result. Yeah, so one of the biggest things that I have learned is that you really need to fully understand what you are doing. And you need to reach out for like alumni or for other people who have had like, I think at least like two or three years experience in doing market research to understand the root, the root things, the root logic of market research. And from then, when you understand the root logic of it, you can start like designing your, your research. So and the second challenge is that like, to be honest, in-depth interview is a really, really hard thing. Yeah, and even that you have given like many training for the LC, but the fact is it's still really hard for them to do it in the right way. Yeah, and I, I think it's a normal thing because like there is there is a reason why we like to uh to to hire a market research agency. It costs really high, right? Because it's truly a hard task, one of the hardest tasks in, in marketing, as I believe. Yeah. So, but in depth interview is a really important thing. So if we screw up in this stage, the data will be invalid to be analyzed. So my solution is that first, I have created a really step-by-step -step framework. So besides giving the training, uh, me and my ESD create a detailed guideline framework for each LC to use here. Secondly, we design a really strict auditing system, which means like we constantly giving auditing, like we join the in-depth interview, the real one, and we give them feedback after that. So me and my ESD, we have directly joined uh, at least two thirds of the customer interview of the LC. And I also request the VP to give really strict auditing to the members interview as well. So here's the, the, the sheet that uh, we tell the LC that after they uh, book any meeting, they need to tell us and we will put our name in here to, uh, and so they will know who will be the one who go with them for the interview. Yeah, and the last solution I have done is that I give them, I give the whole commission constant feedback. Like after every audit I joined, uh, I will constantly text in the marketing group that what are the real common mistakes that I, I was seeing at that time so everyone can fix and avoid it. For example, I see that uh, LCA is doing uh, good at this but bad at this, then I will tell everyone like, okay, so remember to not uh, to do this more but to not do that. Yeah, so it's mean like constantly giving them feedback and uh, for to improve the the um, the in depth interview before it became too late. And the third thing is that uh, the challenge that some LC may cannot meet the timeline. So my lesson learned is that always have perfect time in case the LC cannot meet the timeline. At at first, my mistake was that I planned the timeline too like too to fit, to close. And I didn't expect the case that LC may not meet the timeline as the result, I need to change my timeline a lot. Yeah. And the last challenge is that uh, one of, besides in-depth interview, uh, analyzing is also one of the hard part of doing market research. Therefore, LC may miss some of the important part in qualitative analysis because they don't have much experience in this, which will also lead to having a wrong data when you're doing the quantitative analysis. So my solution is that uh, I use a tool called Envivo to, to together with the LC analyze the in-depth interview so we can double check for each other. So for this tool, it is a qualitative analysis tool. However, it is a paid tool. So therefore, carefully consider if you want to invest in or not. 
Okay, so and here's the last part, like what can we use by persona for and why we need it. Okay, so for this part, uh, I just want to ask the first question. Like before coming to this part, I want to ask like, what are the thing, the product we are selling and who are our target customer? Like, uh, so is it global talent? We are selling global talent and, sell, and we sell it to youth, right? Yeah, it's right, but it's not very right because it is too general to say it so the things that we are selling is that we are selling our targeted few and we are selling our ir partners opportunities and the people who are we are selling for is our buyer persona not youth yeah first it's about our like uh, a product which means that we can only serve what we have like we can only uh, give the our target customer the the opportunities that they can surely go like not like will not be clashed with visa things like that and then for our buy persona like uh, back to the core of marketing is that a product for everyone for everyone is the product for no one so of course we cannot like we say we cannot say that we are selling this for youth but what who is youth and what exactly who is youth yeah, so that's why we need to have a buyer persona to sell to the right people, the right opportunities. And uh, so what can buyer persona can be used for? So first, for marketing purpose, uh, it is like it, it this time we are living in the customer center era, which means everything we do needs to be surrounded by our target customer. So if you clearly know your Bible so now you can start design your product and design your marketing strategies based on their insights to really convince them and like to make them want to buy our product. So secondly, uh, having a Bible so now can help you to choose what will be your distribution channel. Like, like knowing clearly who is your customer you will know like what will be their uh like their social media habits what will be their favorite channel from then you will use that channel to appear so they can see you okay instead of like knowing nothing about your customer and then you put advertising or and like you pay money for advertising in every single channel which will be a waste of money for you and it will not be effective as well the third thing is that when you know your buyer persona, you can customize your key message and content. So it will be a really insightful key message. Then, therefore, when your buyer persona see the message, they will feel related and they will urge them to apply for your your uh, for your product. And uh, and the second purpose is you can use buyer persona for sale purpose. So for the buyer persona, it will not replace the sale discovery process. But it will save your time, so you because that you will have a better preparation. For example, before coming to a sales meeting, like if you don't know anything about that person, uh, you will may not have a good preparation. But now, if you can somehow understand the buyer persona you are attracting, you will have a preparation. You can prepare it at home, like uh, you will know like a basic idea of their pains. You know the basic uh, how he and she measure success, and you know the basic values that the the buyer the, the your your customer is value. So you can prepare your sales pitch at home, and when you come to the sales, uh, like if they appear as exact the buyer persona of you, it's very really easy for you to start like deliver, de delivering your sales pitch so uh, to wrap up everything I just want to say that uh, one of the main thing you have to keep in mind in doing market research is about it's not about doing the right thing but it is also about doing the thing right and doing market research is one of the hardest things in marketing so if you are not doing it in the right way to be honest it will be a waste of time of doing it Okay, so thank you for listening. Uh, you can contact me if you have any question and you can read off the my detailed material. It can guide you more and to help you understand more to do market research.